Hello and welcome to 4.5's Design. In this video I'm going to show you how to make ranunculus from coffee filters and icing colour gel and particularly how to use that icing colour gel to create different effects from potting shed to bridal and even how to glaze your pots. So keep watching. To make the leaves, start by cutting out your pattern and I've given you um, a link to a, the pattern that I've used. I just looked up um, ranunculus leaves and hand drew these. Um, if you don't need the patterns, that's entirely up to you, use them as you wish. I've done two types, one that's um, quite detailed like this, another one that's a little bit simpler. They're there for you to use if you wish. What I tend to do is take a piece of coffee filter, this one happens to be pre-dyed and I'll talk a little bit about that shortly, um, place my leaf on the coffee filter and draw around it and then cut it out. With a simpler shape I would probably just cut it out without drawing round but for these because of the detail I draw around with a pencil and then cut them out. So out of that one coffee filter you'll probably get three lots of cutting out which will give you one two three six leaves i reckon because for each leaf you need two of these leaves and a piece of wire to act as a stem i run out of my normal wire that i use so i've used this wire that's on a a barrel that's wrapped around, cut the piece out that you need, take a piece of florist's stem tape and simply cover that wire. I'm twisting the wire and pulling the stem tape at the same time and what this does apart from giving you the colour that you need just going to move that down slightly so it's all fully covered. It also straightens out any kinks that you might have by having the wire wrapped around that barrel there. So continue down and once you've finished you can smooth it down so that you've got a nice stem to work with. So all we need to do now is to stick these two pieces together with the stem in between. I've used four different sizes and patterns of leaves so that you can mix and match when you're putting them together. Again I've just researched what ranunculus leaves looked like and hand drew them. I couldn't get hold of any real ranunculus which is why I've sort of not done this video before. I was hoping to find some in my local garden centre, but I couldn't. So I've had to go purely from images that I've been able to find. Once you've glued one, put your stem in, and I'm very carefully gluing that centre, making sure that it, that stem is fully stuck down and then you apply the top. I tend to start in the middle and at this point line it up just as carefully as you can, hopefully so there's no overlap. If there is, when you've finished, it just means you need to trim that off. So if you're as careful as you can now, it'll save that bit of time trimming it. Because you've got that stem in the middle, 
there will always be a slight mismatch but if you take a little time now it avoids you having to do any trimming afterwards so you apply a top coat of the glue making sure that you cover right down into that stem so that it's fully sealed and I go right to the edges too so that the two pieces of leaves are fully stuck together and sealed. Now you could leave it as it is now to dry. However, I think you need to do the other side as well. So I think it's best if you do that now. So gently turn it over and apply that glue to the other side. For this part of the process, I've always used Mod Podge in matte. I know there's different types of Mod Podges and there's different craft glues. I just happen to have used that. I've got a big pot of it and it seems to do the job. So you seal that down and again if you take it off now and let it dry, it'll be far easier than having to leave it on your baking parchment and peeling it off after. So once you've glued it, leave it to dry fully. I'll just show you what it looks like if you don't glue each side. So on this one here, I think you can see there, that's the side that has the glue. And that's the side that doesn't it isn't quite so attractive or leaf like so that's why I put the glue on both sides once you've got a selection of them all cut out glued together and sealed you're then going to assemble them and because you've got four shapes you can decide how you're going to put them together I'm just going to put three I tend to always put the big one in, but you don't have to. It's going to be more natural mixing and matching. I put them one on top of another. Line them up like that so the stems are lined up one on top of another. And I'm going to take a piece of stem tape and I'm going to apply that right to the base of that bottom leaf. And I'm going to keep my stems parallel and wrap that stem tape around again that's just my preference I'm twisting the wire and pulling the stem tape it's a very curious thing this stem tape I always think I'm trying not to twist those stems but keep them as level as I can get to the end I'm going to snip that off Oops, popped in me, in me glue. And again, smooth it down so you've got a nice strong stem. And then you can separate those leaves as you like. You don't have to have three, you could just have two. It depends how many you want to do and what effect you want to get. And what you might want to do, I've done this before on other stems is take a half piece of stem tape and just wrap it around that join there just to make it look a little bit neater this is purely optional and if you're putting lots of the ranunculus together then you're probably not going to see this so you might not need to do this as you would with a, a single stem flower so i've wrapped it around two I'm going for the third now and then I'm going to wrap it around that bottom one again doing the same as before I'm just going to twist that wire and pull that stem tape down I'm just going to nip that in there and it just makes it just that little bit, that little bit neater. Okay.
just wanted to say a little bit about the colours that I've been using for the leaves. Uh, there's two ways of, of doing these. What you can do is to pre-dye your coffee filters. And this is one that I've pre-dyed with the moss green icing colour gel from Wilton. And that was in the ratio of half a cup or equivalent is quarter of a pint, which is about 160 millilitres of water, to which I added one teaspoon of the icing gel colour and one teaspoon of PVA glue. That just sort of sets the colour so you get a nice smooth finish. And with that mixture, you can make lots and lots of different um, coffee filters. It, I reckon you could do 30, maybe even 40 coffee filters from that mixture. And that would give you the leaves that I was working on before. So that sort of colour range using the moss green and pre-dyeing your coffee filters. If I'm honest, that saves a little bit of time, but I prefer the effect of cu cutting out the coffee filters shapes first and then applying a colour. So this is using that moss green again. I tend to get a blob, my paintbrush, add roughly the equivalent amount of water. Obviously the more colour you put in, the deeper colour you get. But I'm just going to show you here what that colour is like. Just water and icing gel. That's probably a little bit watery. Make sure it's fully mixed. But you, you could see I only added a little bit there. This would do you quite a few leaves. quite a nice deep dark green. What would happen if you let that dry? The colour would sort of run a little bit and it would give you a sort of patchy um, effect, which is why I tend to add the PVA glue. It just sort of sets that colour. What it also does do though is to lighten it, so be aware of that. If you wanted to maintain that really deep colour, you would need to perhaps do it without the PVA glue or add some black to it to maintain that colour. But I'll just show you the difference when I've added that PVA glue. Get it nice and thoroughly mixed. It tends to go a bit frothy at this stage. And that gives you more of the moss coloured green that the name would suggest you're looking for. So I haven't added any more pigment in, but it just makes that a truer colour. And that's what I've used on these leaves here. So I cut out my leaves in advance using the, you know, just blank plain coffee filters. And then I applied that exact mixture to them. So I didn't pre-dye the coffee filters in my oven first. The other colour that I've used, and I'll just show you on these... Um, these ranunculus here, if you can see, if I just took my camera up here a little bit and zoom in. That leaf colour is Wilton Leaf Green and I think it went better with the brightly coloured ranunculus. But I applied the same sort of technique to get that and that I cut out my shape in advance and then applied the colour. So I'm just going to show you the difference between the two colours, adding one without the glue and one with. So I did the same sort of quantities as before. I've got that in this pot here. So this is the leaf green. And you can see the difference in the moss green. Lovely colour. Definitely well named. And I'm just going to apply the PVA glue to that leaf green so that you can see the difference. 
just I'm trying to add just about the same am amount of glue as I would have done water to that uh, mixture. Make sure it's really, really firmly mixed. Again, it gets nice and frothy when you know you've mixed it correctly. I realise my head might have been in the way there, so I do apologise if it was. And then I'm applying that, that colour to it. It really sort of freshens it up, I think. As well as I know now, when that's set, it will be a true colour. Which is what I want for this particular flower. The only final thing I just wanted to show you is with that mixture I made before for pre dyeing I've got lots left over so I popped them in a plastic container. I won't tell you which um, drinks manufacturer this belonged to, it isn't something I normally have in the house but there you go, I did on this occasion. Now this was made about three weeks ago and I've left it in this container. Didn't want to throw it away. I thought we'd try and see what it did. This is the first time I've done this, so you're viewing this with me at the same time. What does that look like if you then... Has it maintained any of its colour integrity? Well, I would say that is moss green and a lighter version of the moss green. So going back, that was moss green. Yeah, can you see that there on the shoulder? Oh, I don't know whether you saw that excitement then. Is that off the screen? Let me just show you one more time. So what I've also got then is leftover colouring from when I did the moss green pre-dyed coffee filters. I didn't want to throw it away. So I got some left and I kept it in that drinks container. And I'm just going to try it now to see what that is like. So that is moss green with water. I don't actually think I did PVA glue to this one, but that has retained its integrity colour-wise, certainly for three weeks I think it's been in that pot. So that's something you might want to consider if you're pre-dyeing your coffee filters. Don't throw any of your colour away if you've got plastic bottles rather than recycling them. Recycle them for using them for your colours. So it just shows what you can do with one lot of icing colour gel, how many different varieties of colour you can get just from that one pot. I'm going to start now and make the flowers themselves. And a bit like roses, if you look up ranunculus, there are lots and lots of different colours and slightly different characteristics like roses have. But there's a couple of things that are common to whatever variety it is, and that is a tightly packed central element with a little tiny green dot in the middle and dozens and dozens and dozens of petals. So that's what I'm trying to replicate. Bear in mind that I'm purely going from images at this point. If you've got access to um, ranunculus, the real flower, then you'll be able to dismantle one take a proper um, pattern from the petals. Um, what I've done is to just guesstimate that and I've come up with four different petal sizes all based on a slightly elongated um, oval shape. These have been well used as you can see looking a bit scraggy now. I've included this pattern for what it's worth in the um, video description should you want to use it. It has produced results that look like a ranunculus and I've used a variety of these for each flower. I tended to pre-dye my coffee filters for the petals and cut out lots of different um, sizes in advance. So I've got a bunch of the first size, 
second, third and fourth. And for this, um, I'm going to start with the center and I'm going to use these plastic coated wires. This is probably a little bit long, but it's all I'm left with at the moment. Um, and I've covered that with the same colored stem tape as I did with the leaves, just to give a coordinated look. So I've now got a nice central stem for the flower. And the good point is that you've got that green center, which is what ranunculus have. I'm now going to start with my first layer, the smallest size, applying glue in a crescent smile shape. Pop your centre, your stem in the middle and just simply roll it. And I don't know if you can see that after even that first one, you've got that little centre that a ranunculus has. So all we need to continue to do, and I guess that in terms of techniques, this is one of the more straightforward flowers that I've done, is to continue to do that. Continue to add petal after petal, rolling it round, making sure that each one is stuck down firmly. You'll notice I'm not using my glue gun. I found that for this flower, because you're adding so many petals, purely using um, a craft glue, is better than using a hot glue gun. I think if you were trying to do this with glue gun one, it would be quite thick between each layer and two, you'd end up burning your fingers. So I'm just adding layer after layer. Gradually building up the center that ranunculus and I continue to go on and show you, you can see how quickly it builds up into you can begin to see how it looks like I think if I get that in focus there okay and you carry on like that until you can see it's gradually building up I'm now going to switch to the second size and continue in the same vein. Now at this point, when I first did this, I started to leave a little gap at this point. That's a bit exaggerated, I think you can see there, I used, I used to leave a little gap at this point. But when I look back it doesn't need it, you just keep on adding layer upon layer of flowers. So this is a slightly bigger size because that's got to, got to go over the layers that you've had before. And at this point I can't tell you how many layers I do at each one. I would probably say it's easier to think in terms of how big it is. So after that first layer, it's probably just about a centimetre, which is what in inches. Um, just under half an inch. And I'm gonna keep on, keep on adding petal after petal. Now what could be easier, she says. What you will find by using this craft glue rather than your glue gun, your hot glue gun, is you will, after you've done a few layers, you could 
probably do about 10 I would say something like that you will need to let it let the glue dry otherwise it just becomes a soggy mess so that's just something to look out for and what I'm trying to still do at this stage is to keep that top reasonably flat a little bit in the middle should be sitting in a little hollow because that's what ranunculus are like and I'm just keep on building that up and building that up And I keep on going until I've got something that looks a bit like that. And that I would say, looking at size wise, is we're coming up to over half an inch, and that's probably about over a centimetre and a half. I'm now going to switch to the third size. And this is where I'm going to start to shape it a little bit. Still applying, applying my glue around the edges. But I am now going to begin to just make it a little bit looser. I'll do a couple and then I'll show you close to. And when it comes to where the other one's finished, that's where I'm going to start the next one. And rather than wrapping it tightly like I was before, I'm just going to begin to make it a little bit looser. So that's only just about meeting now. If I can show you closer to you. So that's where the other one ended. I'm just going to continue that around. It's overlapping a little bit. Again, I'm going to try and get it so that it's level at the top, just about. I'm slightly letting it go a little bit looser. So before those two just about overlap, they're now just about meeting. Can you see it's slightly getting, instead of that really tight central core, it's getting a little bit looser. So I'm going to continue to do that. At this point, you may need to Wait, only do a few before you give it a little rest. So I'm just gradually building that up, but now I'm beginning as well as making it looser because of the shapes that I've got. You see, that's not even meeting now, it's getting a bit looser. The two are not meeting. This is the third, sh third size. I'm also going to just begin to move it down a little bit so it's not as level at the top. So I'll just do one more here. So it's a little bit, not quite so level at the top. I'm overlapping it just slightly there. I'm making it quite loose on purpose so that it is now a gap there. We're beginning to overlap it, well, not overlap it by quite a bit. And we're beginning to get that looser feel to those petals. And I'm going to continue to do that with loads more petals 
until we get something that looks like that. So it's sort of triang triangular shape. Not really a ranunculus shape, but if you look from the top, that's that's looking pretty cool. I'm then going to add the next layer. We're going to come back to that layer three, but this is number four. I'm not going to use many of these. And just the thing to remember with these is they have got a top and a bottom to them. I've kept the top of these shapes quite flat to give you that ranunculus shape. So what I'm going to do now is to carry on adding this layer. So this is the fourth size. But now rather than concentrating on the top so much, I'm just going to start adding them at the bottom and flipping them in at the bottom. That's the first one. Again, I'm, I'm not really counting the number of petals that I'm doing. I'm overlapping them quite a bit because that's how it goes with a ranunculus and I'm squeezing the bottom to make sure that it's all neat and tidy at the bottom and I'm going to continue doing this now I'm going to build up that shape. I'm hoping you can hear me better on this video. I've got a little mini mic that's just by the side of me here. I tried to attach it to the neckline of my top and all you could hear was me heavy breathing which wasn't a good sound it was a bit like that clip from singing in the rain that old film where they're trying to do the first talkie and the actress has a microphone near to a heart and all you can hear is a heartbeat well in my, in my first attempt all you could hear was me heavy breathing which is not a pleasant sound so I'm gradually building that up now. I think you can see the shape is coming nicely now. And now I've got those first few of the larger ones and I'm going to go back to the smaller ones. I'm going to go back down the line in terms of sizes. And I'm going to go back to the number three. I would probably wish to leave that to dry the bit that I've just done but for the sake of this I'm going to continue I'll we'll see how we go on and I'm going to attach it to the bottom in the same place as the bottom of the others but because it's a smaller size it's going to not reach quite as far up again I'm overlapping it quite a bit but keeping that top level For some reason I keep getting glue on my fingers. Just making sure each of these is adhered correctly. And really this is just a case of building up the pattern so we get the look that we want and you'll see it form before your very eyes again I'm just keeping that bottom exposed in 
and I'm not bothering to glue at the top there. You must need dozens of these to get the look that you want. I haven't counted them up, I lost track. I decided it was best not to bother counting, but just to do it and do what looked look right. Can you see how it's beginning to build up now? And we're also beginning to get that shape coming down the side there. So I'm going to do a couple more of these before we move on back down to the smaller size. Looking at where I last did one. Like that. finish by doing the smallest size now again and this is going to be even looser than the layer we've just done so we've done the initial level size one moved up to two three and four back down to three and I'm now going to finish with number two which is that one there let me just double check, that's the right size. Number one and number two are quite close together in size. Is that, is that my number two? Yes. So these are my number two sizes. And again, I probably would have waited but I'm anxious to show you this. So again, I'm going to the bottom, keeping that level at the top, but just pinching it in at the bottom, not really worrying about attaching it much anywhere else at the moment, although that is a bit wobbly. Overlapping quite a bit, pinching at the bottom. Now I can tell because I haven't let this dry, this is becoming a little bit unworkable because it's getting a little bit soggy. So definitely let it dry fully before you do this final layer. I've been working on this ranunculus video for some time doing the flowers and then we had a new bathroom fitted and I can't tell you the upheaval that caused nothing to do with the builders and the gas fitters they were absolutely fantastic but we've only got a small house we've only got the one bathroom and toilet so being without those facilities for nearly two weeks was so disruptive I can't tell you luckily we've got some really good neighbours so we popped over there during the day when we needed to use the loo and then we were going around to my parents every evening for showers but it's surprising how exhausting all that is still we've got a lovely new bathroom 
that's going to last us many years to come. A proper grown up bathroom. So it was all worth it. So I think I'm going to call that done now. Can you see how the shape has changed from being that triangle to being almost like a pom-pom, which is what a ranunculus flower is. I'm just hoping I've been able to catch all that on video. If not, I'll be reshooting it. In fact, I think I want to add another one here. Keep on, keep on going with um, these ranunculus I've found. But you can see that actually it's quite a simple technique. You just need to have a bit of patience, cut out loads and loads of these petals and produce your own little pom-pom ranunculus. Once you've got to that stage and it's fully dry, and I realise that that isn't particularly, um, you need to add a sepal. And I make these at the same time as I do the leaves in the same technique, and I've included the pattern for these with the leaves. Just make a little hole in the centre. And then we just need to scooch these up to the top of the... Ranunculus flower. And that one's a driver. Once that's dry, you need to add the sepal. And for this, I made these the same time as I did the leaves. You've got the pattern for these included in the description. Just pre Make a little hole in the bottom for it so that it won't rip when you add your stem. Now again, I'm just going here by pictures of ranunculus that I've seen. So I haven't used a real ranunculus for any of these patterns or for the pattern of the sepals. So if you've got one, then please do that. In fact, you can let me let me have a pattern, I'd be grateful. Otherwise, I've just looked at what I could see online as a, an image and made my pattern from that. I'm not sticking it down fully. I want the top to stick out a little bit. But otherwise, we are good to go. One ranunculus. All it needs now is his leaves adding and arranging in whatever way you wish. All that's left now is a few finishing touches. So add on your leaves using a bit of stem tape. This is a lively piece of stem tape. And depending on what colours you use and how you finish them, you can get completely different looks. So this one here, I love this colour. I used the violet colour in the icing gel. Initially pre-dyed some coffee filters and then I added double the quantity of water to the remaining dye to get a very subtle lilac colour. So I used the, the darker for the centre and then the lighter for the outer. See so that lovely change of colour. So once you've got
got a selection all of these pastel colours here before you um, I used with pre-dyed coffee filters and I'm just going to mix these now with some gypsophila I think it's called gypsophilia baby's breath however you like to use it so I'm just going to build up a little collection of them You'll notice I haven't put leaves on all of these because they're going to be together in a bunch. I thought we probably wouldn't need to have everyone with leaves on. This one I wanted to show you here, um, the white one. I just took basic coffee filters but I bleached them by soaking them in lemon juice for a little while. It just gave it a slightly different sheen. That's another tip to pass on. So I'm just building this up with my different colours and dispersing it with the jib. It's a lovely, almost bridal arrangement of your ranunculus. I'm just going to pop those in a vase now. So that's one way of arranging them. The alternative is this here. And obviously I used completely different colours for these. And I used the technique of preparing the coffee filters in advance and I used um, the PVA glue to um, make the petals for this and it just gives it a slightly iridescent almost look, almost glowing colour. This orange colour is golden yellow and the yellow is primrose yellow but that that produces that golden yellow produces this orange color and all i did with these is to give that different look is to color the center i just got a bit of a different colored icing gel and colored the center pop these in a little pot that i had Bit of oasis, put my flowers in, covered with the moss, and that gives you far more of a, I would say, a potting shed type look compared to the bridal look. So that's two completely different looks that you can get using the same technique but different colours. And stay tuned because I'm going to finish by showing you another way to use your icing gel colour and it's how I decorated the tops of these pots. I just wanted to show you this now. Um, I was about to get rid of this leftover icing gel that I'd mixed um, to make the leaves. It had got dried out I hadn't washed it out immediately and it was quite a warm day so it had got really thick and gloopy and I thought rather than wasting it I added a tiny little bit of water to reactivate it but as you can see it's quite thick and gloopy but I used that then as an experiment to paint the top of a couple of little terracotta pots that I've got that I want to use to um, put this these ranunculus in and I'm quite amazed with the result it looks to me like pottery glaze anyway bit of a happy accident I think it was worth trying and I think I shall do it again